Hello, my name is Lance Weiler. I'm a storyteller and for over 20 years I've been working in film and television and games as well as art installations. A lot of my work centers on a mix of story and code. Uh, the project that I'm bringing to IFA is entitled Where There's Smoke. It, it represents the most personal and vulnerable work I've ever attempted to make. The inciting incident for it uh, stems from a moment where my dad was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer and when that happened we experienced a total lack of empathy within care. It kind of shook us to the core and um, it left me kind of thinking that there maybe there was a better way and maybe there was a way that story could be part of healing. And so my dad invited me to sit down with him and uh, he, he invited me to ask him any questions that I wanted and he would answer, uh, you know, um, and as a, as a process, as we started to do that, we started to surface all these kind of skeletons in the closet and I started to learn all these things that I never knew. At the core of it, I was driven to also want to ask about some moments in my childhood. I grew up in a firefighting culture and my dad was an amateur uh, fire scene photographer and investigator and he shot thousands of slides of things in various states of burning. And uh, two fires intersected with our lives in very devastating ways. One was when our van erupted in flames on a uh, summer vacation, and then 11 months later, our house burnt to the ground. And for over 30 some odd years, I've always wondered if my dad actually set those blazes. Um, so Where There's Smoke started as a physical installation. Uh, it premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival in 2019. It was an experience in a storefront where people could walk in and they would be transported into this burned out house. And they would move through it together with flashlights and they would look to find these enchanted objects. Upon finding those objects, when they put them down on a table that was in the center of the room, the table would come to life and a, a 35 millimeter slide projector would start up and it would start to project uh, these story fragments. Uh, it's a generative documentary in that sense. Uh, it wasn't a linear approach to telling the story. Instead, it was in fragments because when I was dealing with grief, uh, things, memories kept racing back and grief is a very nonlinear process and I thought it would be interesting to kind of explore that and to explore it in an experiential, immersive type of environment. Uh, the project uh, ran over the course of that festival and then was commissioned to have a number of showings in 2020. But when COVID hit, it changed everything uh, in the sense that not only were we canceling those plans, but it also made me start to think more about how the piece had been such a wonderful way for my family to heal. I wondered if it was something that maybe could help others who were dealing with uh, you know, life and loss and memory as well. And so the, the current version of it, I went off and I kind of started prototyping and I iterated on it uh, from the spring all the way up until now. And I've run maybe about 25, 30 different prototypes with it, iterating the design of it each step of the way. And it gave birth to this really wonderful new version of it, which works for upwards of 100 people and uses web pervasive technology like Miro and Zoom. What happens is people are able to kind of come in to uh, a Zoom meeting um, and they uh, go through a number of kind of activities. Uh, they're, they're paired with other people, they're broken out into a group with like about five or six, and they navigate this Miro kind of canvas, this canvas that allows them to kind of traverse this landscape of uh, fragments and they move through it together kind of uncovering elements of mystery, uh, uncovering uh, certain aspects about their own reflections on their own lives and their own loss. And so the project has really kind of grown uh, to the point that now I'm working with the narrative medicine program at Columbia University and we're exploring ways that the project and some of the design principles behind it can be applied within uh, the narrative medicine program, but also can be used as a prototype for empathetic healing spaces. So in a sense, it kind of comes full circle. So I'm super excited to be here at IFA, and uh, I look forward to checking out everybody's uh, works. And thank you so much for taking the time uh, to listen. Thanks.